Nick Robinson, Professor of Medical Genomics, Professor of Bioinformatics, Freie Universität Berlin. Good afternoon, everybody. Big clinical data, new opportunities and challenges for here. precision medicine. So I'd like to give you a whirlwind tour into bioinformatics, which I think is also revolutionizing medicine in the last few years. So this is the basic problem. What causes disease? We think that it's a combination of genetics. So each of you has about four million differences from the reference sequence and environment. And the differences that we all have in our environment are orders of magnitude more than, more than that. And then there's this little black box, and somehow that leads to disease. If we knew about that, we could probably do a lot better treating patients. Um, and that's now with um, the digitalization revolution leading to this paradigm shift. Um, well, you know, 50 years ago, a lot of medicine was done on intuition. Oh, my ear hurts, it must be a, an ear infection, you get antibiotics. This has yielded to evidence-based medicine in the last 20 years with, with studies, but um, now we're moving into the era of precision medicine with the goal of taking the individual differences in genomes, um, a lot of other um, studies, and basically coming up with the single best treatment for each individual patient. So um, medicine is becoming a data-driven science. Um, the role of databases and, and computers is getting more and more. One of the things that my group is doing is, is ontologies, and so this says this is not a pipe. So for you, this is either a brilliant work of modern art or maybe it's a bad joke, but for computers, it's a disaster. And um, so one of the things that is, I think, really changing uh, the, the way uh, precision medicine can be done is ontologies. These are computational models of human knowledge. And um, why is this important? Well, I'm going to present one example. We're using model organisms to understand genetics. So we see four organisms here, humans, mouse, fish, and fly. They each have a mutation in a gene called PAC6. And as you can see, it's causing a, an eye problem in each one of them. And so if I didn't know about PAC6 in humans as a doctor, and somebody came in with this eye problem, but I knew about these, these mice and so on, well, I could have a pretty good guess that it might be the PAC6 gene if I did a genome sequence, trying to find the right mutation amongst these four million variants. Um, and in fact, um, this is really important because we know about maybe 3,000 or 3,500 of the 20,000 protein coding genes in our genome. We don't know that much about a lot of genes. However, there's data for now about uh, 15,000 of these genes if you um, look at the related genes in these, these model organisms. So um, this is an international product, uh, project, um, the Monarch Initiative. Um, we have accumulated 50 million data points, um, nodes in a, in a semantic network using these ontologies, um, 50 million connections, most of which are actually connecting different species and different data sources. Um, and we're using this um, basically as a foundation to um, perform um, precision medicine. So um, this is, um, th these are some of the, the projects that we've been uh, doing over the last couple of years. Essentially, what, uh, what is now possible is that you determine your genome sequence. Basically, this results in a list of up to four million differences from the reference sequence. Most of them are neutral. It's actually really difficult to, to figure out which are causing disease and which not. Um, and so you can then use these, these programs to compare the network of genes, the network of mutations, the network of clinical features of phenotypes between humans, mice, fish, flies, and, and many other organisms uh, to get actually a hint of what might be the, the, the diagnosis in your patient. Using this, we were able to um, improve the diagnostic rate in, in children with rare diseases at the Charité Hospital here in Berlin by, by about 30 percent and um, to discover quite a, quite a number of novel disease genes. Finally, uh, I'm presenting work of the group of um, Andrei Retsky, who's in Chicago, um, and he, he's been able to accumulate data on 150 million patients in the United States. And what he's, he's doing is using statistical methods to compare the age of onset um, between men and women. So um, <coughs> the x-axis, this is birth to age 70, and this is the frequency with which this diagnosis was made. Uh, blue are boys or men, and red are, are females. And as you can see, 
there are characteristic differences uh, in not only in the age of onset, but also between the two genders. Um, for instance, uh, oh, sorry, having the same problems as everybody else. Um, autism is known to be, okay, I think I'm just about to finish, but um, using these curves, they're, they're basically, we can use them to mine for the causes of disease um, in a, with a big data approach. So thank you for listening.